Hello everybody, I'm the Hamster Hammer Game Channel, welcome back to Hearts 5 4 and to Arms Against Tyranny, where today we're going to be playing as Sweden and we're going to see what we can get up to with their new focus tree. Let's hop on in. So here we are, the wonderful nation of Sweden. We do have 12 divisions to kick things off with and they look absolutely horrendous just like I think every other nation I've played as so far. So we're currently ruled by Per Alban Hansen, he has no modifiers whatsoever. We have five national spirits, we have Hunger Scold, which basically we have the risk of getting strikes and riots if stability is under 65%, and this will be removed once we have 40 civilian factories, or more than that, sorry. We have severe lack of ammunition, which is bringing down our defence and attack capabilities, which means it needs to go as soon as. We have King Gustav V, obviously our current king. We have neutral foreign policy, and Folk Hemets, which is bringing down our War support, t uh, putting up our stability, bringing down military factory construction speed and dockyard construction speed, but putting up our civilian factory and infrastructure construction speed. So I think we can modify this through the tree. And here is the tree today. So of course, there is form the Nordic Council in that part of the tree, which may or may not become available to us today. Then we have basically one focus that we need to do to unlock the rest, but the industry stuff is over here um, and some army stuff as well in here. Uh, we then have two different routes that we can go which breaks into two different routes. Um, we are going to be focusing primarily on over here which is the fascist the monarchist routes because yes once again we are going monarchist. Well I suppose we'll start with the one focus that we're actually able to do. The Defence Act which gives us the event the Government Commission recommends rearmament. Yes, we definitely want to start rearming because the world is most likely going to turn into an absolute mess with non-historical AI focuses on. So we'll see what absolute chaos ensues in the coming years. So the government commission recommends rearmament. In 1930, the state appointed a par parliamentary inquiry to provide guidance for the future defence spending of Sweden. The Farmers Party alongside the moderates are pushing for increased spending, while Prime Minister Per Alban Hansen of the Social Democrats strongly opposes this saying that such a move would cripple his vision of social reforms. Amidst the increasingly threatening rhetoric from its neighbours, the inquiry is now staunchly on the side of right-leaning parties, stating that a negligence in defence would be against the interests of the state and its people. This has caused a government crisis, with Per Alban Hansen threatening resignation until he can solidify his base in the upcoming 1936 election. In the meantime, we should appoint someone to lead until the upcoming election. Um, let's go with the Farmers Party, let's get Axel in. And there he is, what a glorious moustache you have there, Axel. The Ethiopian ambassadors approached the government in a formal rec request from Hale Selassie to be allowed to set up a temporary government in exile here in Sweden if the war against Italy goes badly. Seven would definitely make maintaining good relations with Italy more difficult. Um, sadly, I think I'm going to tell Ethiopia no. Well, that's two videos in a row that Germany has decided to kick off a civil war. Sorry, I was just having a wee look around the Swedish focus tree just to see what interesting stuff there is. There's Per Alban Hansen bus. Creates a mobile headquarters unit which allows our leader to evacuate. Should the bus be destroyed, however, it will not bode well for our Prime Minister. We gain mobile headquarters, which gives us some nice wee bonuses. But <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine the decimating effects if we are to lose our Prime Minister in a bus crash. Today, people across Sweden are gathering to cast their ballots in the national election. The Social Democrats are expected to make a comeback as projections indicate they stand to gain several seats in the Riksdag. However, both Bonde for Bunde and the Hogern, Hogern party are hoping that an unexpected swing could usher either of them into power. With more fringe parties projected to make minor gains among an uneasy world situation, anything is possible. Well, there's only one choice we're taking here. So it's the three options we had earlier. We could have Per Alban Hansen come back, but that's that's not going to happen. Axel has done well so far, so he is going to continue to remain in power. So we've now got uh, an aggression pact with Hungary and some good relations with them because they now have a Swedish king on their throne. So I've just noticed that we actually do have a decision now where we can call on Hungary for support. They get a, an event, Sweden is under attack. Um, I, I don't really see a situation where that would be anywhere beneficial because Hungary is a landlocked country. So unless the enemy actually borders them, it's going to be very unlikely that I'm going to call on them if I'm getting invaded by the UK. They're not going to be able to do anything. So the old enemy stirs. We have completed it. So we can now go ahead and prevent a red dictatorship. 
Oh, it's been a while since I've seen a League of Nations event, but the League of Nations Council has decided to impose an all-out embargo on trade with Italy as a response to the country's unlawful aggression against Ethiopia. The sanctions include any and all resources that can be used for the production of war equipment. They are to be imposed immediately and remain in place until the country ceases hostilities against Ethiopia. Um, we can leave the League of Nations or we can help out. Um, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to embargo Italy because it gives us stability and I kind of want the stability. Okay, so we can now appeal for support from the aristocracy, the industrialists, the military and the rural folk. Um, I think we'll go ahead and do all of these, possibly. Um, we do, however, have to pay them back in the future for their support. And if we don't meet the obligations, then our stability takes a massive hit. Okay, um, Denmark's just declare war on... Iceland. Members of the aristocracy offer support. Members of the aristocracy have long been disgruntled at the influence over national affairs being curtailed in favour of elected officials. Many have therefore agreed to use the remaining resources to support a nationalist movement. In exchange, they will expect some political concessions once the movement gains control of the Riksdag. That is fine by me. Holy moly, Ethiopia has survived today. So military officers offer support. There is no shortage of military officers who are dismayed at the mismanagement of the nation's defences under the current administration. Many senior officers from the army and navy have therefore agreed that they will aid the nationalist cause in exchange for bolstering the defence budget when, the, when, the, when we come to power. Rural support swells. Many outside the urban centres of Sweden feel left behind by the policies of social democrats. Furthermore, they feel threatened by industrialisation and worry that their traditional way of life is being eroded. By sowing seeds of discontent among them, we have managed to create a groundswell of support for nationalist movements who promise to invest in the countryside and restore traditional values. Fika with the King During a secretive gathering at the King's Palace in Stockholm, leaders of the various nationalist movements met with the monarch to discuss their desire to see Sweden restored to its former glory. Following a long discussion on how to coordinate the various movements into one cohesive one, it was decided that when the time is right, King Gustav should reassert himself as ruler rather than a figurehead. The king is hesitant to commit to such plans, but has agreed to take more active role in politi uh, political affairs, starting with a tour of the realm to gauge support among the people. I, I don't think we have to worry about support in the slightest. Ah, I can see why Denmark decided to invade Iceland. They've went fascist. And also to point out, we are now actually the kind of Sweden. And of course, King Gustav V is now in power. The only bad thing he has is the minus 10% to political power gain. The rest is great. Oh, the car lists have popped up, but they are... They are pretty damn weak, and it's just made the Spanish Directory even weaker. So yeah, Aragon's gonna come out on top. There is now also an Italian civil war. The co communists are, are here. Why would I want to approach the Allies? Wait, we can demand the return of our lost territories? I would love to see what that actually includes, because France and the UK get two times request and the US gets it. I also forgot to point out, we can still meet with the industrialists if we really want to, but we need to restore the aristocratic privilege, which gives us entrenched aristocracy for a year, which does not have good bonuses. Increased military budget does give us some nice wee bonuses at the cost of political power gain. And then invest in rural regions, we have three states that ha have state categories lower than town will receive one infrastructure. And we get stability and also the event rural workers remain supportive. So we need to do these before the timer obviously runs out. So let's start with the aristocratic privileges. Well, sadly, it's looking like we're going to be hit with countrywide strikes for 180 days, but I don't care. I'm going to be going after Norway and demanding that they give us territory and then hopefully they become our puppet. Oh, wonderful, a Soviet civil war, and that is a horrendous front. Lev Kamenev, the faded star, is here today. And two other developments I didn't even noticed happen. Germany is now here under Konrad, democratic of course, and then the Polish National Republic under the uh, fascists is, is here. Um, Lithuania, I, I really don't think that was a good idea, you utter fools. Ah yes, wonderful, Norway has caved to us and given us their territory. Excuse me, Denmark? You have refused to give us Bornholm? I I'm just letting the Danish uh, push across ever so slightly. In fact, I might actually just move in for the kill now. They've sauntered forward ever so slightly. Well, we're hopefully about to push into Copenhagen. Nice. Well, that was the hardest part of the invasion. It's just a matter of pushing forward now. Oh, we've lost Hunger Scold. Perfect. Oh, 
Good, because I, I could really do with not having countrywide riots and strikes happening. And also is the capitulation of Denmark. Well, you can just get... Eh, well, you can get puppeted for the time being. Except from you're not getting the island. Okay, so we have Swedish Norway and we have Swedish Protectorate of Denmark. Wonderful. Lithuania has been defeated by Poland, so we can go after Estonia and Latvia. Well, I have to say, as a ballsy move... Wait, Mussolini survived? He held on? That's the first time I've ever seen the communists lose the civil war. But anyways, it's round two in Ethiopia now. Oh, that's adorable. Latvia and Estonia are guaranteeing each other. Oh, well, it's, it doesn't matter. I'm declaring war on both of you anyways. Yay. Okay, we've landed and we're pushing forward. That is all that matters here. Through both official and unofficial channels, the Germans have made it clear that Soviet Socialist Republic is and has been the greatest threat to the stability of Europe since its inception two decades ago. They've urged us to remember that we are not alone enduring the threat of communism and that if the only the continent unites, we can beat down the bear. No, I don't want daily democracy support. Okay, Estonia is down and out. Welcome. The Swedish protector of Denmark hands over Danish overseas territories. Wonderful. Sadly, we just don't get Iceland. So Iceland has just demanded the return of Greenland from us. Eh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, there we go. Latvia took a little bit more effort to take down, but they have now perished. Well, well, well. Germany invites the Kingdom of Sweden to the Central European Alliance. It appears the German... Cons German... Germans consider us to be this of strategic interest to them, and that they deem it more profitable that we work together than that we should let ourselves be divided by our logical, ideological differences. This morning, the German ambassador delivered an invitation for us to become a member state of the Central European Alliance. Um, I'll join it for the time being. Oh, wonderful. Finland has caved and ceded the, ceded the Aland Islands to us at long-lasting justices of the past have been unmade and its proper status has been restored. As a token of goodwill, Finland has agreed to demilitarize Lappi, a huge stepping stone for us in restoring the Eastern Kingdom. Slowly our influence over Finland grows. Yes, wonderful. Let us do Ostra Rexalvan, which if they accept, they become a puppet. Well, the US has just joined the Allies and the Soviets have just declared war on Poland. Poland who are all by themselves. Oh, for Pete's sake, so the Italians have just joined the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. With the UK, France and the US all together fighting them. The UK also has a war go- Why do you have a war goal on me? I've done- I've done nothing to you! It is clear to everyone that Finland can't stand against the Soviet threat. The Finns talk about their sovereignty, unable to realise that what they perceive as independence has not been given by any political amount of force, but exists as a result of the chaos from the Russian Civil War. Ever since that day, a clock has been ticking which will soon hit zero, and the old enemy will rear its ugly head again. It is therefore imperative that we control, uh, take control over Finnish affairs before the Soviets can. Yes, Swedish Finland, welcome, and you will be instantly integrated. We can also proclaim restoration of the Swedish Empire, which just gives King Gustav some modifiers, but we need Hanover, Mecklenburg, Leningrad, Luga as well. Seriously, the UK gave Iceland the Shetland Islands? Well, that is just completely unacceptable and cannot remain to be the case. We are going to be naval invading them. Ah, Luxembourg, Belgium and Netherlands have all joined the, the faction now. Well, that's even more ridiculous. We now have Nation Francais, which is obviously Jack Story, it's fascist France. Yeah, that's right, Iceland, I'm coming for you. Yes, the Shetland Islands have been liberated. Wonderful. Now, once we take, hopefully, the Faroe Islands, which has one division on it. Please don't lose. Oh, thank heavens for that. We have taken the Faroe Islands. Oh, we can restore the Kalmar Union. We are the Kingdom of Scandinavia. Oh yes, I feel so much safer in the world knowing that the Southwest Pacific Initiative exists with the uh, Dutch East Indies and Australia. Well, I'm glad Iceland has been dealt with. We did lose one division, but it, it, it's done. We also now have the Kingdom of Scotland is a puppet. They're just chilling in the Shetland Islands. I'll be honest, I completely forgot about our severe lack of ammunition. Um, we're now standardizing equipment, which is going to modify that. Oh, wonderful. Finland is no more as well, which means the Nordic League is here once again. Well, um, we, we found a lot of Finnish weapon caches. Um, excuse me, what the frickin' hell is that? 
So we got the Polish Soviet uh, Social Republic. Right, that's fine. Why do we have the Belarusian Independent SSSR? Why does Poland control there? Why does Lithuania only control parts of that? Ah, that is hideous. Oh no, Swedish Estonia? Excuse me? Oh well, at least on the plus side, we do obviously have our allies who will be able to help us out. You know, Germany, Czechoslovakia, um, Hungary, of course. Oh, well, Germany's went ahead and invaded first. Um, excuse me, Germany? What the freaking hell is going on here? 200k they've killed already. Um, oh no, we're at war with it. Oh. Okay, don't really know how that's happened. I'm just doing one last thing before I join on in. I'm hoping they get enough political power to actually swap to extensive conscription as soon as the war kicks off as well. Ah, damn it. Okay, that, that can still finish. Wonderful. Um, can we take Leningrad? I was going to say, that would be far too easily done. Okay, we're now on extensive conscription. I'm just going to wait 26 day 16 days rather. And then we'll be pushing. Oh wow, we've we've taken Leningrad already. Right, that's good. That's good. Right. Had the bus. Had the bus. What I think we need to do actually is... How many... There's no f Russian ships up in there. We'll just send a wee little task force to do some convoy raiding, I think. Okay, we've got a mini encirclement so far. It, it's, it's not going to be as good as an encirclement as I'd really hoped it was going to be when we initially... Looked at taking them down. Alright, we're kind of just waiting for these divisions to finish mopping up Murmansk. Which should be done very, very soon. Big push from the Nordic Empire. Well, Nordic lead rather. I was going to say the Nordic Empire. Let's see if we can make some progress down towards Moscow. Well, um... Japan's potentially going to end up war with the SSSR now, thanks to the Iberian Socialist Union. Well, Japan is in the war because Vladivostok has fallen already. Okay, we're on a bit of a war path here, just trying to push through towards Moscow. I think we are sadly going to lose this national spirit and not have it reset. Actually, no, we might be able to do it. We still have a month. Yes, it's reset. Wonderful, we've taken a Mos we've taken Moscow. Uh, we've done not too bad against them, actually. Japan's doing pretty good as well. This is this is actually going quite well. Um, I think you're probably a supply hub, aren't you? No, you're not. Oh, I was relying on you to... Get some oomph back into this front. Okay, right. We'll need to build a, another rail, railway line in. So the SSSR is in a bit of a terrible situation. They've got, I, I guess, two fronts over here because they're cut in two. They then have to cover the Iran border, which they're not doing a great job of defending. And then they've got Japan as well to worry about. Is Romania trying to flip sides here? They've just had a coup and King Michael has taken over. Right, I, I don't really know what's happened here, but there is a possibility for a nice wee encirclement. Yep, there we go. Nice. Alright, if we can, just slaughter them all, please. Oh yeah, holy moly, the Germans and their allies are smashing through. Well, Romania's gone, Hungary's thick, Yugoslavia's starting to fall, Bulgaria's going, and we now have the Greater Workers' Congress. So Yugoslavia's just backstabbed. Um, the Greek faction, but hey ho, we have another communist nation who is now at war with Germany. Okay, we are seeing a little bit of a push back, and the Germans have decided to abandon in here. Uh, as tempting as it is to keep that for the military factory, war support, and dockyard construction speed, I, I think it's probably about time we do economic deregulation and get rid of uh, Folk Hemet forever. I, I really don't know where the rest of my allies are, really. Uh, Germany's got a small contingent of troops over here, but it's mainly me. It is, it is mainly us. Why is there now a Republic of Turkey and a Turkish Socialist Republic? Please explain to me, game, how that's happened. Oh, the Hellenic Republic and Bulgaria are both here. And the Yugoslavian Federation. Well, thanks to the assistance of the Americans, we have managed to get back into positive guns. And hopefully, we're starting to see some supply hubs coming into play here. Well, we've taken control of the two supply hubs over here now. So supply should be pretty good centrally for the time being. Yeah, because that was a great idea, Soviets. Great idea. So, their list of enemies gets bigger and bigger. 
Well, it's nice to see that Spain's getting invaded now, and I've just noticed that the uh, Dutch have went fascist. Really, Germany? You've just invaded Yugoslavia. See if they join the Allies. Just destroy them as quickly as humanly possible, please. They only have two of the five divisions. They joined the Popular Front. Wonderful. Uh, it does look like the Allies are pushing in as well now, which is good. And it's ours. Wonderful. How's that looking for them? Getting there. Baku's already fallen. Rostov's actually the capital right now. Just gonna be a little bit cautious up in the north because obviously that's gonna see supply issues probably re-emerge. As we secure Rostov, we'll have a nice wee pocket of uh, divisions to kill off. Spain has fallen to Germany. Wonderful. So yep, it is just the SSSR that needs to die. And oh boy, are they on their way out. Oh, it looks like supply is becoming an issue again. I'm just gonna get a wee death stack and just go for Kazan because that will be a supply hub. Why, Germany? Why are you naval invading this island? You're going to win, but what is that strategically doing for us? So the Soviets are very, very close to biting the dust. We've killed 2.2 million alongside the Germans. Japan's killed a mil. The Czechoslovakians, 714k, and then Manchuko coming in at almost half a mil. Priority has to be given to securing Batumi. Because if that falls, they are all absolutely screwed. And Russia is no more. Oh, that's fine, Germany. Just because I've caused 69% world tension, you've just decided to kick me. Russia immediately has war goals on everybody. Um, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I think Germany's a little bit mad at us because we've went ahead and we we took all of the claimed land that we had. Um, hey, what were you expecting me to do, Germany? You know, it's it's my territory. Oh, great! Now everyone's deciding to embargo me. I only took what I had claimed. Oh great, no, the UK's just decided to declare war on us rather than Germany. Well, that's that's absolutely wonderful. Right, I I cannot be bothered fighting the Allies. Look at those numbers. Look at those numbers and look at mine. Not happening. Not happening. Um but yeah, I'm gonna leave that there. It's been a very, very fun and enjoyable game. We've almost recreated the Swedish Empire. We literally just need two little bits of Germany, but I'd say we've created it. And remember, we do have a tiny little Scotland puppet as well in the Shetland Islands. Who have they managed to get a division out? No, they have. They have nothing. They have forty-nine whole peoples. At least they do have four and three. You know, that's pretty good factories for Shetland. But anyways, guys, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will catch you all very soon for another video. Until then, do take care. Cheer bye for now.